we're gonna do an American Cocker Spaniel head today. So we've got our beautiful little man, Castillo. Uh, so when you are looking at doing a uh, American Cocker Spaniel head, I would start with the muzzle and we're gonna do that on a 10. So I tend to pull the coat up and out of the way. And then on a 10, you can go with, sorry, with the coat. You've got quite the little, um, oh my goodness, like so much crest. He's like, yes, I love it. Uh, but I'll take some of the volume out and then I'll actually come in a diamond pattern between the eyes and down just so he doesn't get that in his eyes. And so you can see that we're taking a small triangle out. Then again, we're still on the 10 and now we're gonna go with. Okay. And then we can pull his mush mush, his lips taut. And we're gonna go straight back from the corner of the eye. And then here, you might want to, if they've got, if the dog that you're working on has as much lip and mush mush as this boy, pull it taut so that you don't potentially get any of his lips. But what's really important is to go with the way this coat lays. Now, this little man who is lovely, he does have some skin issues, uh, but for the most part, he's pretty decent. So you can see pretty quick, that's half his face and how much smoother that lays. And then we're gonna do same over here. And for now, like I said, from the under eye, just go straight back. And then we're gonna pull that lip tight. So there he has a little bit of this allergy. It's okay, bud. <laughs> and then look at all the doggo. Look at all the chins. You have about as many chins as I do. So all I'm doing is pulling the skin taut so I can safely work around this throat, nose to the sky. Now with the Cocker Spaniel, you want all this to look like it just happened. So blending all everything off, like look at, he looks like Elvis, he's got so much coat there. <laughs> but when you're old, and, now keep in mind, he does have a little owie right there. That's his little um, reaction that he has. But for the most part, other than his Elvisness, we can see how nice his muzzle is. Okay, and now what we're gonna work on is the top of his head. So with American Cocker Spaniels, the top of the head is known as the crest, crown, or tam, okay? Now there's many different ways that you can go about this. There is no one right answer. I'm not saying that there's one right answer. We're just going to use one of the methods. Um, so what, <laughs> Put your tongue away, silly boy. So what I tend to do is make an L with my hand, okay? And then I bring that down and you can actually see. So my thumb goes from the corner of the eye and then I make a little bit of a C and then same again. So if you're looking from the top, right? You can see that there's the corner of the ear and I'm well behind that. There right there is the occiput, okay? And so we're coming just before the occiput. You're far better off to leave a bunch and then eke it as we scissor, then take too much and not have this lovely roundness because that's what we're going for. Uh, so he is, uh, as much as I love this cocker, he has incorrect coat. It's more poodly than it is cocker spanially, uh, but it doesn't make him any less handsome. And he tries really hard and he's a very good boy. So I'm still on the 10, again, from the corner of the eye, right around. And you can, what can we feel? We can feel the bone ridge coming around and off the eye. There's the corner of the ear. So about halfway now it's a little bit more forward, but if there's the edge of the ear and there is the occiput, right? We're in between those two spaces, right? So 
edge of ear, Ooh. occiput, halfway in between. Okay, so we're gonna start. Hey, bud. Now I'm on a 10, but when we're around the corner of this ear, we wanna be really mindful that we're not potentially pinching that and go in a circle. Hey, bud, good boy. Hey. Oh, it's such a good boy. Okay, and then once I have that roughed in, I'm just gonna take the rest off with the 10. And sort of where our landmarks are will be a lot easier to see. Now his body was done with a seven. But, so now, okay, hang on, bud. So my fingers are pointing at the corner of the ears and there's his occiput. So you can see the round, right? So from the corner of the eye, around, right? And that's gonna help us get this lovely crest going on. I am gonna clean up a little bit. Right there. Oh yes, that's the that's the moose. You sing boy. Okay, so that's how we start there. Then what ends up being really easy, we also have to do the clippering of the ears, uh, but let's finish this off just so that you can see it. Is that okay if we look at it from well let's look at it from this way. Let's start with our scissors at an angle about 45 off the stop okay and we're gonna follow that around at that angle okay and all we're trying to do is kind of like look at that mop top that he's got going on there <laughs> I know you're very handsome don't don't think that I'm not saying you're handsome but he's crazy you've got a lot going on like if we comb this up like seriously i think that you're it's just crazy so what we're gonna do you can start to see from the side we're going for this round to help with his like just to really show off his skull now if you're not comfortable doing this with if you're not comfortable doing this with your shears you can easily use your blenders, right? But you can see from the side we didn't do, put your tongue away, don't, don't, don't stick your tongue out at people, it's rude, that we're starting to get that round, right? If it makes you more comfortable, you can do it with your blend. We round this out. Now again, I know mine are a little bit of a cheat because they are rounded blenders, but you can see at least on the one side how we're getting a really lovely shape. And then if we're gonna look at him on profile, is that we would then blend this in because it should just look like it happened. Yeah, bud. Now again, he does not have correct coat. Um, but he is a lovely companion, and this is how you would do a companion head. Because obviously, if he was for show, this all of his neck coat would be carded, and he would have quite the bouffant going on. But he's a companion in a work trim, so we're gonna take that obviously a little bit tighter. Now I will say about this boy, he can really pull it off, um, which is, and I think his mom really likes it, so <laughs> that's why he kind of started off looking like Elvis there. But... but you can see how quickly that all comes together. I think maybe we have a little bit of a peak. So right, at least he has that. And then now we can finish and do his ears. 
so when it is about cocker spaniel ears hello son what i am gonna do is just pull that up a little bit mostly so he doesn't isn't silly okay so when we're looking at cocker spaniel ears now we did have to take his ears down because they were quite matted before so we're in the midst of growing these out but uh, the great thing is, is that it's kind of hard to see the pattern, so we can show you sort of from scratch. Now here is the edge of the ear leather, and see how it naturally bends back. Well, the end of that bend is what we're going to do all of our lines to. Now this, what the blade that you use when doing an American Cocker Spaniel's ear set is going to depend on the pigment that they have. Now his pigment is considered self-colored or brown. Uh, so he can pull it off a little bit more. So for him, we're probably gonna go at about a 20. But if you had a buff, uh, so a blonde cocker, and maybe they didn't have the best pigment underneath, you might want to stick to a 10. It does not matter if you go with or against as long as it gets done and it's done safely. Uh, so what I'm doing is putting my hand underneath and just pushing the ear cartilage up so it's as flat as it can be. And I'm just coming around at the very top. Now here I'm actually putting my finger, right? You can see the exaggerated part so that I can come and get this edge nice and clean. We always go away from edges. We never go at edges, that's dangerous. So what I wanna be able to do is come off this edge and then we knew it was the end of the fold. So that's gonna be our line. Right? Then what I'm gonna do is flip that over and I've sw swapped over to a 30 because it's on the inside of the ear. And do you see how I'm rolling that into my own hand? So if anything is gonna get bit by clippers, it's gonna be me, not the dog. And then that's how one of the ways that you can get a really nice edge. Then what we also wanna do, just because it's a cocker, get all this near the pina cleaned up. Right, that's the pina which just means edge of ear. Now I'm gonna pop back over to a 20-ish. <laughs> I have to say, I know that everybody wants like exact blades, but it's really dependent on the dog and your comfort level. So do you see how very quickly, even though we've just roughed all this in, we now can see where the edge of that ear goes. So I'm gonna flip over to a 30 really quick and I'm just gonna crisp the edge against my finger again um, and always away from the edge. But do you see how much prettier that is? Except for the two hairs I just missed, right? So now we know where it ends and then we're gonna put in the rest of it. And again, that's gonna be on a 20. Now, interestingly enough, when you get this line on a Cocker Spaniel, it is actually meant to be as though they were in a leash, right? So do you see how it's top bud? That now that line starts to look straighter, right? So it's off the lips and straight or the end of that fold in the ear. So technically we're kind of doing this at an angle, but when they're standing there, it looks a lot straighter. It's a little bit of the, that optical illusion. So if you see my line, right, I can probably dip it a little bit more right here. But where that looks, and it would be, right? It looks shorter here than it is here. But if he was standing, it levels out and that's what we're going for. Now back in the day, interesting little fun fact, we used to put a little V in here because as their ear folds right there, we would put a little V because it made it look nicer, but that's going out of favor. But if you see somebody doing it, if they're not wrong, it's just an older uh, fashion trend because you have to remember everything with dog grooming is a fashion. Um, like, yes, we have things that we do to make it practical, but there's so much that changes in our industry from year to year, depending on sort of what catches favor. Now, having anything uh, out of place, we don't want. So I'm gonna go over to a 10. 
so that I can lean into the seven blade that we used on the jacket. And again, all of this we want lovely and clean. We want it to look like it just happened here, but because anything out of place is just not going to look good, right? So all of that is cleaned up. Oh, except for all your extra skin. Hey, bud. I know. We're just gonna we're just gonna glance over that. Nobody'll know, son. There we go. So handsome. Right? So you can see how that lays. Now another trick that you can do if you were setting your uh, body coat with a seven blade, then what you can actually do is take that same seven blade and actually very carefully come backwards. And you get a lovely blend doing that as well. Um, some people are very nervous about a seven blade, so it's just whatever makes you most comfortable. But that, very quickly, is how you would do cocker ears and head. Just don't look at that one, we haven't done it yet. <laughs> and look at that handsome boy. Oh, he's very good. I know, you're a very good boy. <laughs>